Hey everyone, Jess here. I am with the lovely Colleen and she's back from her last appointment, which was these really fun, I don't even know what color this was, but a fun pink and um, we actually did a stamp design and then I tapped it with foil. Um, so we got, you've got the paisley actually in there with the foil, but we're going to remove these and then her son's getting married. So she's getting some French and I've done her pink and whites for a long, long time. Um, and so like from way before we even had gel polish in the world of gel polish. And so, um, let me make sure that we can get this centered. So she wants her old way. So every now and then. I do the old school pink and whites, and so I'm doing it with her and y'all today. So, gonna remove her color. I've got my Valentino turned down a bit so that's not too loud, but it's still picking up dust, which is good. So, do you want me to take any length off? Okay. Short, short. Not short, short. Just fingertip. Yeah. So when I do my pink and whites, I'm gonna be prepping her uh, nail and making sure that pretty much I'm going down to the natural nail on the tip because you don't want a lot of bulk. And if you leave a lot of gel on the tip and then you put your white on top of it, you're gonna end up with far too much bulk on the nail. So we're gonna do her whole service because I've had a lot of requests to just, people wanna see it all. They don't want me to stop anymore. So sometimes I show just art, but today we will do the whole shebang. So please, if you come in, hi, Michelle. Oh, two Michelles. Yes. You're gonna read my, I can't read, so my lovely client Colleen's gonna let me know when y'all pop in and say hi. To Michelle's. Morning, morning. morning. Where are you at that it's morning? <laughs> it's like four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, Terry. I miss Terry. She's one of my lovelies that moved away from me. So if you have any lifting, she had a little bit in the corner here, which is really common. Everybody has that. Almost everybody. It's your writing finger. Just I just work my e-file in in a flat direction and push that lift off the nail. Alaska. Alaska. Oh, I miss her. I may have to send you an SOS. By the way, I've got the show coming up in Florida in a few weeks, and I was hoping that the girls down in profiles they were going to try to find me some models, and now they're saying that all the girls that they know are all going to be working for them at their booth. So I'm going to need models, I think. So Jessica here is coming with me so she can model for some, but you can't have the same models for everything. So if you're going to be at the premiere show in Orlando and you would like to be a model for something fun, like French twist or something like that dates, uh, June 2nd and 3rd or whatever that weekend is. If you can't, please do not stress about it. I will be there. I will find people. But it's always a fun. Well, it's fun to see her. Last year she came and met me there. We went to Epcot and they have the new um, Avatar Land, which was really very cool. Um, so I really enjoyed hanging out with her all weekend and we got to go to that. They have a ride that you sit on, like a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And so it's like riding, like flying the Banshee. So you're literally like, fly, like flying. It feels like flying. Oh, wow. And we were with this couple in line and they were um, an older couple and retired or whatever. And so they have season passes and they were literally like spending their entire day they just kept getting in line and going on that ride over and over and over. Oh I think, I don't remember how many times they'd been on it that day. It was something like four or six times in that one day because he was obsessed with that ride. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it, was it was really cool. All right, I'm going to make sure. I feel like my 
lamp, I moved it. My, sorry, I'm trying to readjust this. I had the uh, camera with me this last weekend at the Oregon show, which was really fun. And if I got to meet you or talk with you at that show or you came to my class, thank you. It was awesome. Um, if you sat in my table and got a demo by me, make sure you tag me in the pictures because the whole day ends up being a blur and I think, oh, I think I did some really fun nails today, but I can't tell you what they look like. I see them when they go away. Hello, Janet. So I'm thinning these down, removing the old color, leaving a bit of um, whatever gel was on there before, typically natural or might have been enhanced. Could have been a load of things because your base layer of hard gel is whatever you feel like using at the time. But as I work around, I just push up any that might be lifting from the top. Then it's not so much work. You know, a lot of people feel like they have to work so hard to get any little bits that might be lifted. And Colleen's a relatively easy client. So she doesn't have, <laughs> yeah, like you, I mean, you have a little smidgen of li lifting. So yeah. relative to most oh, okay. people who come in, personally. oh no, you personally, you're really easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Let's have a little chat about that. <laughs> That's funny. She's been coming to me all over the place back when I had just had my daughter, who turns 11 this summer, by the way. Um, she came to me at my house. And then the Salon in Bellevue for a while. And then my other Salon in Bellevue. And then here. And then I'll be here till next summer. And then we're up in Monroe. And I will be there forever. Never moving again. I'm never moving again. I might move from our metal house to the big house once it's finished, but that's the only moving that's happening. So my removal process takes, I don't know how long this has been on, but it's much faster than some people say, oh, you don't ever soak off. And I say, heck no, soaking off takes so long to get all the stuff out and get prepared to soak off. and. The actual soaking off process is about five minutes per layer. And if you consider you've got top coat and a couple layers of color, and then you got to scrape it all off and no, thank you. So I don't soak off. Now, if I had a client who came in and they were just going to be around, um, they just wanted to get their nails done for a wedding or a special event and they weren't planning to maintain them. Then I would do base coat color and top coat, and I would either educate them on how they can soak it off at home, or they can go get it soaked off elsewhere, but I don't soak off in the salon, so I just don't like to do it. And I've learned, I'm, I'm too old to do things that I don't like to do. <laughs> I am! I mean, I used to, you know, back in the day when I was a baby nail tech, I worked every weekend, every Saturday. I was like, I have to work Saturdays. People need to get in on Saturdays. And yeah, it's easier for a lot of people that work, but I hated it. And once I had a kid, I really hated it because then I never got to actually spend the weekend with my kid. And so someone finally told me to stop doing it because I was my own boss and I can. And I'm like, oh. Genesis Ward is asking if you're doing regular gel polish. I am doing, no, I'm actually going to be doing a classic pink and white. So I'm going to be using um, pink and white gels. Colleen's phone's ringing. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be using pink and white gels. So I'm going to use um, actually two different lines of pink and white. Um, I have, stick this under there for now. Um, I will use the Control Ultra White from the Performance line. And then I have a pink, um, no, this doesn't zoom. I was trying to see if that zoomed in and it does not, so I'll just do that. Uh, I have a pink, uh, natural cool pink that I've mixed for her in the past that has sparkle in it and so it is right here and 
this natural cool pink and it has a little let's see if I can get it in the camera where's my there we go a little bit of a sparkle in it so I just use a little bit of um, of just pink light pink glitter and mixed it in so I keep this on hand for her and anyone else who might randomly want it so yeah I was talking about um, soaking off because what I was removing was gel polish and so I was just talking about that process okay so I um, if I was doing a standard gel polish I would still have the base layer of hard gel so if I was doing just instead of pink and whites with her if I was doing color then I would just um, do my 30-day manicure layer with clear and then color but we are doing pink and whites today So it's really important that you go in and scrape the nail plate. Now there are a ton of prep bits out there and they're awesome. And I can show you one that I do like to use on occasion. I don't always use it. Um, but what I find is that if you use a prep bit, and I'll show you what I mean, because I can use it on her. So this is the, we called it at the show the 4-5 Jess because we couldn't figure out what last number it was. So I kept saying, sending people over to Bruce Atwood and saying, they want the 4-5 Jess. And so we finally figured out that it was 459, which is this little bit here. And the reason I like this one is because Skyver bits are quite a bit um, more rounded on the end and they tend to tear up cuticles. So I'm not a Skyver bit fan. But this one can get underneath the cuticle a little bit and really push it back nicely. So if you're going to be using a bit like this, the best thing to do is to work half the nail in one direction. Can this freeze on me? Okay, I'm going to work half the nail in one direction. And then you're going to put your uh, flip your switch on your... Um, on your electric file to reverse and that way you can go this direction because you get a better um, result being able to get in this corner of the nail and you're going really slow this is on very slow rpm so there's no i mean you can color their skin they're not going to barely feel it um, you just want to very carefully go around the edges now that's all fine and it's totally cool when you do this. Oh, I didn't do the thumb yet, I went the other way. But you need to make sure that you're actually getting all of the stuff that's stuck. I'm gonna switch it back into reverse. That you get everything off the nail. So one of the reasons I scrape is because sometimes if people are using a bit like this and they're using it day in and day out on every client, those bits don't last forever and they start getting smooth and people find that they are not actually removing as much as they thought. They're actually smoothing over it and they end up with lifting again. And so I've told people, I'm like, check and see if you're getting it all, because if you're not, then you might need to change your bit out or make sure that you're giving it a quick scrape to get everything that might be stuck on the nail. That bit's relatively new. So everything looks good. Okay, so that hand's prepped. Now I could, you could do all, um, all 10, all 10 as you do that. You don't need to do just five. It's not gonna add that much more time. What kind of cake are they serving at the wedding? I guess they're not having cake, which I'm bummed about. Oh. Megan is. What are they, what are they having? Um, for sweetness. You know what? I can't even remember. She told me a long time ago. But I was like, oh, I want cake. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. But we I'm don't get cake off enough. To be, so. so you're not. No cake for me. Right. But mm. I know they're having a taco bar. 
Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Who doesn't like tacos? Yeah, it should be good. And then after the ceremony, there's going to be games out on the lawn. So we can play like giant Jenga or mm -hmm. whatever else we We had giant Connect Four that we spent an eternity making yes, because Jared was determined to make, it, yeah. to make a giant Connect Four. And we had the giant Jenga. We still have the giant Jenga. I mean, he has, he, we like games. Okay, so here's a little fun fact about Jess. We like games. So, <laughs> Jared, my husband, loves Risk, like, to the point where I can't even tell you how many different versions of Risk that he has been gifted or found at, like, a thrift store or what have you. Just so many. And he had a dream once that he woke and he woke up from the stream and in the dream they were playing a giant like risk game like standing on a risk board oh, wow. and he's like i gotta make that and so he <laughs> he decided that for a wedding he wanted his giant risk board so yay yeah i'm putting this right back and cleaning it off and then putting it back in my perspective um so he sewed a giant risk board. I mean, it's fabric and it's massive. I'm just gonna get this little bit of skin that's hanging up. And um, made all the pieces out of big blocks and it, it's huge. And so for our um, rehearsal dinner, she, or he uh, had all of his friends and they all played risk. And now it sits, I don't know, in our garage or something. Yeah. But it's a giant risk board. I remember you making it. I'm a game player, so I don't remember what it was. I, I, I don't, I mean, I've played risk, I think, once. I haven't played risk many times. And so I couldn't tell you how, I'd have to be retaught how to do it, I think. So, all right. So right now I'm just using my 180 side of my file. And I'm just going to blend in her old growth, and I'm gonna make sure that this free edge is nice and thinned out. Real quick, this isn't doesn't have to be a long process, but I just wanna blend everything, shape, and thin out. Is anyone here? It's so quiet. Sherry. Ursula. Ursula. I just emailed you, Ursula. She just sold another house. Ursula's my amazing realtor. She's oh. awesome. So she's not a client. Or she's not a nail tech. She's just wanting to see what's going on. I watch like sometimes, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula and uh, we have another mutual friend, Kara, who's, um, who is how Ursula found me. And Kara will stay up at night and sometimes pull up videos and watch and her husband will be like why do i hear jess <laughs> in the middle of the night <laughs> it was funny she's like Shh, go back to bed and what i've discovered this weekend my husband's hilarious he was in my classroom when i started teaching my lexia certification class and apparently when I teach, I have a different voice. And he said it was enchanting. Oh. <laughs> and I said, oh, he's like, I would have stayed longer, but I thought it'd be weird. But I just wanted to listen to you. And I'm like, oh, aren't you cute? Hi, Michelle. All right, so that hand is prepped. Michelle said I'm a closet nail tech. I can't help watching. <laughs> <laughs> Terry. Yeah. Well, we love Terry. I have all those new glitters, so whenever Michelle picks them up, I will be ready to send them to her. And she can make your nails sparkle. Luckily, Michelle Baker has found Terry, so Terry had moved to Atlanta, and now Michelle Baker is doing her nails, so that's awesome. I'll see Michelle, I believe, at a uh, class in Florida as well, because... Um, we both got to sign up for Madeline's class in Florida, which is in October. And unfortunately, I'm having to move a few clients because they had already booked that week. But I try to schedule as far out in advance as I can. 
So thinning out the free edge, blending in the old grow out. These files um, are zebra files. They are pretty new to the Accents file collection. They haven't been around too long. And I used to use the 100-100 all the time. Um, but they I feel like they've changed the manufacturer or the person, the, the manufacturer they get them from has changed the paper a little bit. And now they annoy me. So I switched to these and I really like these. I kind of wish I had switched to them a long time ago. Um, they're really, really smooth. Like just, I, it's hard to describe but they still have a good enough strong grit to file with, and they still take as much as I want off, but they are smooth, which I love. So I'm definitely becoming a huge fan of these zebra files. And they only come in a 100, 180. So we will have a big file sale in a couple of weeks. So if you need files, and you need to stock up on files, keep an eye out on my Instagram and I will post it. All right, done with that. Okay, so I'm going to cleanse with my prep and wipe. And you wanna make sure when you're cleansing, you're just rubbing onto their nail. You don't wanna be rubbing all over their skin. If you're holding your wipe like this, a lot of people will pull onto the skin and you don't wanna do that because what happens is you end up pulling oils onto their finger and you don't wanna do that. When doing a fill on someone who's acrylic, do I take off the acrylic or will accents be compatible? If you're doing a fill on someone with acrylic, I would always recommend that you really thin out that acrylic as much as possible because acrylic is so much heavier um, than gel. What happens if you don't is that you end up with a teeter-totter effect and somewhere around the six to eight week mark, they're gonna have tons of breaks. So you really wanna thin out the acrylic as much as you can so that uh, you can keep the weight down. That would be my suggestion. I don't typically fill over acrylic anymore. If I have a new client, I ask them to remove what they have on before they come in so that I don't have to discover they have some nasty product on that's gonna take me an hour to get off. I don't got time for that. All right, what am I doing right now? This is called No Lift Primer. What I'm doing is dehydrating her nail. She may not need it. She actually didn't really get a lot of lifting, so sometimes I might not use this on her. Not really super necessary. But if you want to make sure your client's getting no lifting and they might be getting a little lifting, one of the ways you can do that is make sure that you're removing um, some of the moisture from the nail. So dehydrate it really well, and No Lift Primer does that. Um, a fix it, which is our other primer, does a completely different job. It bonds the gel to the protein in the nail. So she actually did need the primer because if it dry, if it's taking this long to dry out, then she needed the primer. So typically, if someone dries out instantly, they didn't need it. But because hers is not drying out instantly, she probably needed it. So while we're waiting, I'll get my gels ready. So I'm going to use. Um, Maybe I'm going to use my mix, actually. So I have this pot of a little bit left of mixed gel. And what this is is a mixture that I've had for probably two years. Gels don't really age, so you're fine. And it literally sits in my drawer without the lid on, so you don't have to worry about that either. And it's kind of sticky. Um, it is a mixture of Competition White and Builder French White, which are both from our classic UV gel line. And it just, I like the strength and the consistency of it. It's very strong because our classic um, Builder French White Gel is a really, really, really strong, flexible white gel. So I tend to use it for my very few <laughs> pink and whites that I do. Um, you can use Control Ultra White. It's a nicer, it's the, uh, if you are doing this with, and you need an LED ultra white to use, you can use Control Ultra White. It's quite a bit thinner. If you can see how thin that is, it's a much different consistency than my little concoction that I have. Um, I'm gonna get one of these wipes to clean my brush, which is, I sell these in a big roll on my website, but it's nice because it keeps the lint out of my brush. That's my Smile Line brush, it's the 107. All right, so she's turned chalky now. And I'm going to take my Fix-It and you wanna bleed it off onto your wipe. 
so that you don't have too much on it. And then I'm gonna go everywhere that her natural nail might be showing. So typically I do a circle because I've thinned out the tip so much. Most of the time I'm down to the natural nail right on the tip. So I will go around the cuticle and then I will go onto the tip. If you wanna brush the entire nail, that's totally fine. No, it will not hurt your gel by going on top of your gel. But I typically just do a circle and then I don't have to worry about the middle of the nail. So there's a little spot there that was natural nail. Okay. <laughs> the volume's a little, up a little bit on that tablet. <laughs> I have a tablet on so I can kind of see when you guys comment and I heard a little faint echo of myself. So apparently the volume is not turned all the way off. Okay, so that's your fix it. And again, that's a protein bonder. So it's also called a sticky primer. Um, so you can use that. Um, I like to use in the salon OptiBond, which is part of our options line. And you guys will see this pot. It has little sparkles in it. I know. Um, that's not the brush I want. This is the brush I want. Um, it's not going to hurt anything having a little sparkle in the pot. But once I get all the way to the bottom, I'll wipe it out before I fill it up again. Um, OptiBond comes in the little pot and then refill tubes that you can just squeeze into the pot to refill it. Which is nice because if you have a giant pot and you get sparkles in it, you got to wait much longer to clean it out if you need to. Uh, why do I use OptiBond? OptiBond is part of our options line, which means it's a soak off flexible gel. And I typically like having a soak off flexible gel as a bonder. Because Okay, sorry guys, I had done the first part of this and then I had it Bluetoothing out and apparently it overheats a little bit when that happens after too long. So turn the Bluetooth off and um, we're back in business. So all I've done with this is our, um, there's a piece of lint on there, that's right, um, is the OptiBond. So this is after prep and after your bonding gel. So again, you can use OptiBond, you can use X-Bond, you can use Adhere, you can use UV bonding gel. Any of those are going to work perfectly fine. So, um, let's see if I can get this one pulled up. Okay, so now I'm going to do my French. So I typically like to go about halfway up the pink part of the nail and draw a V, and then I fill it in. I have a little too much on my brush. And then I fill it in, and the reason I do it like this is just so that I can um, have a bit of a guide on where I want it to go. If I don't do a guide and then I go to wipe the smile line after, then I end up into the white of the nail a bit much, and I don't want to do that. So just kind of work it around a little bit. Make sure it's on each side and go to the next one. And I typically do four nails and then the thumb separate. Um, so again, I'm going halfway up the nail, halfway up, and then just a little bit up above her natural white so that when I wipe the smile line, I've got some wiggle room. So because her nails already have a little bit of gel on them, there is a little bit of an arch. When I put the pink on and then finish file it, I don't have to worry about the pink being on the white. So you will see that it will not matter. Now, if it was a full set, that's a different story. I have to do a little bit different process. But when it's a backfill, it's one coat of white, one coat of pink. When I do a new sculpture to full set, I do two coats of white and two coats of pink. So, different process. I've had some requests for doing a class on, like, Lably or something like that, where I can go much slower and answer questions as we go. Um that isn't kind of like full speed salon situation because this is full speed salon. So this is, I can't slow down. Someone else coming after her. <laughs> now another appointment. You have another appointment? I would do my eyelashes. Oh, do you like mine? Mine look pretty good yeah, this they time. Are. They look really good. Yeah, my, my lovely Jess, I, my girl who does my lashes is also named Jessica. Mm -hmm. She had shoulder surgery and so She's um, unavailable. So one of my other clients who does lashes was trading with 
have agreed to trade with me. And they ended up a bit more, um, she used a bit more curved ones, which my husband and Jessica both said they like a lot. So yeah. I'm going to let them know. Let my other Jess know. Okay, go more curved. Okay, so smile line time. Now with this combination of the Builder French White and the Competition White, it really stays where I want it to. Um, I don't have to worry about it moving on me, which is another reason I really like it. And I'm just balancing my fulcrum finger and I'm starting on one corner and making the letter U. If your Frenches don't look very pretty and you look at them and go, what's what am I doing wrong? Well, first look at your shape. Is your French shape a letter U or is it straight across? Because it should be most resembling the letter U for it to be pretty and for your nail bed to look extended a little bit. If you have straight across French, then they tend to look squatty. Squatty and ghetto. It's not pretty. Mm -hmm. You just do it until you're happy with it. I just try to make mine all about the same. There's a bubble. All right, in the light. So I do four and then I go again. Barbara, the mix for white that I have here that I typically use a lot is a mixture of Builder French White and Competition White. They're both from our UV line. Competition White by itself is extremely white. It's kind of hard to work with in my opinion, and you have to be very careful not to get it too thick because it won't cure very well. Builder French White is great. The consistency is pretty good, but it's not quite white enough for a lot of clients. So the mixture of the two, and it's a little bit thick. If you add the Competition White and the Builder French White together, it just makes a really nice consistency. And I like it to be a little bit warm because the temperature is actually warmer right now. It's moving really well. Um, it's very temperature sensitive. Like most gels, they're very temperature sensitive. So if your white doesn't move well enough for you, like it feels too stiff, just get it warm. I either have a heating pad around or a cup warmer, like a mug warmer type thing that you can just plug in. They're small. Um, and stick it on there while you're prepping, and that'll be long enough for you to just give it a quick stir, and you're going to find that the temperature has changed the gel consistency so fast, and you becomes much easier to use. Now, if you leave it on there too long, then it might be, like, super runny, so you don't want to leave it on there too long. I've done that. I turned my Builder White into, like, top gloss once because it became really runny. Now, it'll set up again, and as it gets cold, it'll stiffen back up, but... Um, you don't want it to be on there too long. I'll just use my orange wood stick. We have, Accents also has one called French White, which is a semi, not semi-translucent, but kind of. I mean, it has a little bit of translucency if you put it on really thin, but it's a very neutral white, and the smile line does not stay sharp when you do it. Um, it starts to blur a little bit so that it has more of a neutral kind of like natural smile line look to it. Um, all right. So once I get on those, I'm just going to kind of glance over at the first hand I did and try to get my white to be about the same amount and my smile line shape to be something on that. Now, if you decide you need to push it back up, push it back up. Rewiggle your white a little bit. There's a black speck, not invited. And then rewipe. So that was quite a bit higher, so I definitely need to go down quite a bit more. I want to make the match. And you can come on this side and wipe and just keep your brush straight up and down. You don't want to treat this like acrylic. If you're cutting into your 
gel when you're trying to wipe your smile line it's going to make a mess and you're going to not understand why your smile lines aren't looking how you want them to and if you're an acrylic tech you might find that an issue for a little while while you get used to working with gel on my wipe and it's driving me crazy. This one has glitter, but that's okay. Hello, Carrie, darling. So I'm just pushing this up a little bit more because the shape got a little bit out of whack of what I want. wipe until you're happy that's why gel is fabulous because if it was acrylic it'd be setting on you i have to practice acrylic though for competition that's really scary for me so you can go back and you can re-wipe if you want to and you're being picky like i am sometimes picky Okay. I always make it look so easy. It is easy, Carrie. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. All right. Again, halfway up the nail, I make a guide, color it in. I don't have my oval brush handy. If I was doing this as a full set, I would make sure I had my oval brush because it's a lot easier to float gel, I feel like, with oval brush than with this one. Oval, I think, is the 111. I do like that one for floating gel. Okay, taking my 107 brush, starting here. Always do it a couple times once I get the first part cleared, then I can be a little bit more exacting. Go ahead, all the way, you know, the whole thing. Right, Surprised, I, the yeah, no, <laughs> the lights are on the side of this, so it's fine. Um, Genesis is asking, you're surprised I don't do the reverse method. I don't. Um, I know a lot of nail techs do. It takes me much longer to do the reverse method and have it look perfect. I don't, I've been doing it this way for 16 years, and then the reverse method came out, and I'm like, uh, okay. And I can do it in you know, like a competition, and then I'll refine the smile line and do all of that, but I don't have time to do all of that in the salon. So I do it this way because this is the way that I've always done it. There's nothing wrong with the reverse method. If you're awesome at laying your pink down and getting a perfect smile line, cool. I am not as good at that as going through and wiping my smile line to get the smile line shape that I want. So I don't do the reverse. is not the skill that I have. I struggle with it when I do competition. If I didn't, if I have to, if I can't finish file, if I can't file the smile line in competition, I'm never happy with my reverse French. I always can see the little notches in the white and it drives me crazy. I hate it. I'd rather do it this way and not have little notches in my white. All right, so I'm using Natural Coverage Cool Pink. Um, you can use Balance Cool Pink. They're almost identical. Um, and then it just has some sparkle in it. So I'm just going to lay this 
over. And bring it up to the smile line. And then once I get to the smile line, I'll get, get the bubble out. I just brush down. And I'm gonna finish file off what's left on top of that white. So it's not gonna be there. So you don't have to worry about it mucking up your smile line. That's gonna be filed off at the very end. Reverse French makes you nervous as a client. Why, Terry? What do you mean? Because you don't know what I guess. I, I guess you don't you just don't know what it's going to look like. I mean, that's why. Yeah, the sparkle in here is pretty. Yeah, I don't. I have a hard time with it because I just can't. Make, unless I'm filing the smile line in with my file, I cannot make the smile line look as good. And I hate the little inconsistencies. And I can see it. Like even from really amazing artists, if they're not filing the smile line in, I see the little bumps around the smile line. It drives me crazy. So I am gonna do all five on this because I'm about three minutes behind looking at my clock of where I wanna be so that I get done in an hour. Cause it'll take me about five minutes to buff these real quick and finish file them and top gloss them. So you don't have an appointment exactly at five. Oh, yeah, all kinds of time. Somewhere? Yeah, see, it's kind of in between Ballard and Northgate. Oh. Well, if anything ever happens to that person, I can give you the info of the girl who did mine now because she's in downtown Basel, so. Okay. Well, I'm actually having a lash lift. Oh, ooh la la. I don't know about any of that stuff. It's basically a perm on your eyelashes. Oh. So they dye them and they perm them and it, they curl up. Because I was doing lashes and I lost some of my natural ones, like really close to the inside of my eye. Mm hmm. And I'm like, oh, I was getting scared. I was going to lose my lashes. Oh. Alrighty then. I don't know much about the world of lashes, but I do know that when I don't have my lashes on, that people are like, you look so tired. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not tired. I just don't have my lashes done. And so, I know. and then when I do get them done, my husband gets all smiley at me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know you like it. It's so funny when I, when I know, isn't that funny? Cause I'm really just not very high maintenance at all. I don't wear makeup most days and, mm -hmm. and uh, I just never do. And he's not like, he is not a makeup guy either. Like it's, it, he's just not. And so it was um, really funny when we were, we got married in September and I told him, oh, I'm probably going to keep my lashes on until our, you know, until our event in November. And um, he's like, oh, I thought you'd keep them on until Christmas at least. And I'm like, oh, you like them. <laughs> and it's like, he didn't want to admit that he liked them. <laughs> but he totally likes yes, them. These guys are like, what are you doing? That? Or they're like, oh, you look fine without them. I'm like, yeah. yeah, but you don't smile at me like that, except for right when I get my lashes done. So I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty funny. All right, so I'm just going to remove the tacky off of this real quick. And we're going to do a quick finish file using the 180 side. We don't want to take off a lot but we want to just smooth out and buff this before we top gloss. Just a quick buff. And by sliding over the top here, I'm removing the pink that's sitting on top of the white. So she gets a nice sharp smile line out of it. The trick is just not to overdo it because you will remove your white too much too fast and that's always a pain. I'm just going around the cuticle, making sure it's blended.
come over on the sides, make sure that the side walls are shaped right. I can't not finish file backfills, which is one of the reasons I don't do them very often. Um, but Colleen special requested it. Um, because she loves, I think it's because you like the pink, right? Mm -hmm. She loves the sparkly pink. So that's why she really likes this way of doing it. Um, you know, backfills give you a different look than a French gel polish. And if, you know, we had this color pink in a French gel polish, maybe it wouldn't make a difference, but we don't. So custom glittery pink is super fun. I do have one client who wears them quite a bit longer. Um, her pink and white backfill takes me a good hour and 15 minutes for sure. Um, I may at some point make an extra service on my menu and expand for pink and white just because it does tend to take me longer than a regular 30 day manicure. But for now I just, I have two. I have occasionally Colleen. She does color most of the time now. And uh, the other one. She's got back-to-back -back weddings. It's marrying all her kids off in one foul swoop. <laughs> Okay, so that's how they're looking now. Let's get this one done. Oh, read it to me. She's trying to get her glasses out so she can read the question for me. This is why I love to watch other people work. You never know what you don't know until you learn something new. I oh. would never get green and white first because then I would swipe to create my smile. And I don't know. Oh, see more. I think if you touch it. Huh? Oh, there you go. Um, and then there's two white sleeps in the nail bed. I love the way you do your pink and white. Thanks. Thanks, Genesis. Well, and Genesis is on her way to becoming this year's Nail Pro Cup champion because oh. she's been competing everywhere and doing well. She does art and everything. I don't have time for all that. Someday I might do art, but I have not done art. Um, but she competes in, like, every competition. Um... But yeah, my, I, I just, I don't like, uh, doing reverse French. So if you are getting white streaks in your, on your nail bed, maybe clean your brush better between your wipes, um, to kind of eliminate the streaks. That's probably my suggestion on that. And as I'm doing these, they look thicker than what I want. At the very end, after I top coat it, I'm gonna be thinning out the free edge. So don't be as concerned with getting it too thin because if you overdo it, then you end up with balding out your white and you don't wanna do that. So don't overdo thinning out your tip. I just dropped it. Do it at the very end with your leaf file. I'm just smoothing this and it gets any of the pink off of the white. Now again, if I was doing um, a full set, I use a completely different method. If I was using this pink on the full set, I would apply it on the nail plate. I would make sure I wiped and left a little gap actually between my pink and white and filled it in with clear. Um, because my, without an arch or without a layer underneath the nail, like these have a little bit of gel already underneath it. You don't, you end up having pink on the white where your arch is and you don't end up with the right situation. You end up with pink onto the white, but because there was already gel underneath this, I don't have pink on the white. I know it's hard to explain. I will try to show you someday 
if you're doing it this way. But if you're doing it reverse, obviously you don't have to worry about that. And if I was gonna do it reverse, that's totally fine. I would just have to file the smile line because I can't stand smile lines that aren't perfect when it comes to reverse. It's just too hard for me to do it perfectly with just a brush. I'm not that good. Amy Becker's really good at that. I, not so much. I'm the first to tell you that I am so not good at everything. I do what I can to make my clients happy. But that's about it. <laughs> you do a good job. Oh, I'm happy you're happy. That's my goal. So finished filing's taken me about 10 minutes. So this is the big difference between doing a 30 day manicure with no finished filing and going through and finished filing. So there's a time difference there. So if you're doing a 30 day manicure and you're going to need a finished file because you're not a, as good yet at laying down that clear layer and you need to get it smooth before you apply color or anything like that, just plan that it's gonna take you longer than what I normally show you because finished filing takes longer. All right, so I'm gonna top coat these. The top coat that I use is Ultra Gloss, which is from our performance line, which is our UV LED um, gels. And it is an excellent top coat for any kind of hard gel and also for your hairstylists. So it is the Miracle Gel. If you have anyone that is any kind of, if they're ever in any kind of stain, so, hairstylists, people that are um, using self-tanners a lot, which a lot of people are doing right now because they're about to go on vacation and they're like, I don't want to look so pale. So they're all using self-tanners and they're staining their nails. If you have a client who tends to do that, you can use this as your top gloss and it will not stain. I'm good because I'm getting a spray tan tomorrow. Well, there <laughs> we go. Because the tanning stuff has such strong dyes that sometimes people end up with spray tan problems so you can use this over color so i do use it over my luxio or my options colors um if i need to so it takes a little bit longer to apply than luxio um so i definitely don't use it on everybody and it's not necessary on everybody but if you do have someone who tends to self tan or um a hairstylist who deals with a lot of dyes then it would be the top coat that you want and you wanna gloss it on. So I, I do a lot of trainings with people and have discovered that glossing gel on, like top coat, is a bit of an art. Um, a lot of people will go and they'll do this. See my bristles on my brush, how they're flaring? This is not correct top coating. You want to float your gel on. You want your bristles not to flare. See that? That's how you want it to go on. So if your bristles are flaring, you're pulling your top coat off and it might go on, but it might be a little bit streaky or it might not last as long. So you wanna treat it like a gel and really float it onto the nail well because it's gonna make a big difference in how it looks and how it wears. If it's really thin and you've streaked it on, it's not gonna retain its gloss quite as long. So just check and see that there's nothing running anywhere. It looks good. All right, in the light you go, please. So this is um, this top coat does have a little bit of bluing in it, so you might see that. That's to make your whites bright, and um, it's a UV protector, but it's not going to actually make your nail blue. So many of the gels from Accents you'll find have a little bit of a purplish, bluish tint, but they're very, um, very clear, so you don't have to worry about it changing anything. Okay, if you hear mumbling behind us, it's because Jess's client just came in, so we're almost done here. My client's here for my next one, but yeah, a few minutes behind, but it happens with uh, backfills, that extra time for finished filing, but 
My next one is the lovely Brindy, and she comes to me always with nails in very good shape, and I can typically get her out a little bit early, so that should catch us up. And all shall be well. So you wanna get this as close as you can. Should be good. Check your line of light. Try to get it as smooth as possible. Double check these and in the light, please. So your ultra gloss from the performance line only has a 30 second cure, so you don't need it in there very long. Just gonna put all these away, wipe my brush off. This is all you need to do to clean your brush is just wipe it off on a wipe and put it back in your drawer. I recommend not keeping them out because then they can get in the sun and things can cure it. All right, so really good shine on this. You can hear it squeak, just like our Lux Seal. And she likes her edges softened, so I always come through at the very end and just soften the corners, make sure that they're not sharp. And it's best to just do this at the end. If you do it earlier in the service, you're still gonna have to do it at the end. So don't do it twice, you're wasting time. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my e-file and my sanding band. Now, if you have someone that has a really um, super fine uh, C-curve, then you can use a cone bit. This is reverse still. Um, you can use a cone bit, but I'm just gonna come through here at an angle to remove, and the reason is, I'm gonna turn this over real quick for a second. If you see the difference between this one and this one, see how much thicker this one looks than this one? Hopefully you can see that. Um, this one I've removed just the inside edge and this one I'm going to. So you just want to come through with your sanding band at a bit of an angle and thin out the very tip. This is not where your nail needs any strength. And But when the, your clients look at their nails, that's what they see when they go, oh, are my nails thick or am I not thick? So that's the part you wanna make sure stays. I've got some stuff on there. That's the part you wanna make sure stays nice and thin. So then you're going to oil always at the end of your service. And I use a lap towel and just rub that oil in. And then she is ready. I just have one more hand to do, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that. And then I'm gonna sign off. But those are pink and white backfill with a pretty glittery pink. Thanks for joining us, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye.